Hello and welcome back, Amber here, and today I'm going to be breaking down the final preview for The Wheel of Time Episode 8. As usual, if you don't want to watch the previews and you don't want to see any moments from the episode before it airs, this video might not be for you. First off, I have to say that this episode looks incredible. The opening scene begins with Lanfear smirking, walking in a darkly lit building. The interior looks like nothing we've yet seen on the show, and her outfits just keep getting better and better. I have to wonder if this new location will actually be somewhere in the world of dreams or a physical location, Falm, or somewhere else that represents a home base for. Ishamael and Lanfear. Could this be somewhere near Shale Ghoul, a location where the power of the Dark One is at its most concentrated? As she walks, we hear Lan say, I still don't understand why he only woke her. And Moraine replies, too dangerous. I think the others. First off, I have to say that I love we are getting the hint of the other Forsaken this early. I also love that Lan is raising the question because I myself have asked it. Why isn't Ishamayel unleashing more of the Chosen into the world? Is it possible he only trusts one at a time because if they are all out, their motivations are too varied and they cannot work together? Is it possible Lanfear is the only one he pulls out because her infatuation with Rand serves a purpose for his plan? Does Ishamayel think he can control Lanfear, or perhaps does he think she's so predictable that he will always be a step ahead of her? I'm really excited because it seems like we will finally be getting to see what Ishamayel is planning. We see another image of Lanfear and Ishamayel looking at one another and resting their heads on each other with the six seals in the foreground. Is this a tender moment between two old friends or is it a bait and switch? Something that makes us think they are truly working together. Are they plotting which Forsaken they will bring into the world next? Their relationship in the books is really complex, but we don't get a lot of background on it. Anything that happened during the Age of Legends, the era they are from, is somewhat mysterious. I'm really looking forward into anything that builds on it and gives viewers more insight into it. The next scene shows Lanfear, Rand, Lan, and Moraine walking through the ways together. And I am shocked that they are still together, and Lanfear hasn't somehow skipped ahead. It's going to be interesting to see if the rivalry between Lanfear and Moraine lessens with time spent together, or if it only becomes more intense. Moraine continues speaking by saying, But everything I could find out said that Lanfear, Luztheran, and Ashamael were inseparable before the War of Power. They were best friends, and Lan says, just like these kids. The first thing to point out is that the War of Power was the big turning point in the prehistory of the story. It's the time where sides were chosen and people began aligning themselves with the side of the light and the forces of the shadow. It's an incredibly interesting time period where we begin to see the Forsaken and their capabilities. Now the words here seem to be leading us into questioning if perhaps history will repeat itself, that Egwene, Nynaeve, Perrin, Matt, and Rand could all evolve into baddies. I don't think this is to mislead viewers, but to showcase that Lan and Moraine are uncertain in what to expect. But as the scenery from the preview changes, we see Moraine and Lan walking on an empty beach. So it looks like the party of four has split up after all. Moraine and Lan are now alone and are most likely headed to Falm. Where did Lanfear and Rand go? How did they get away? Our next scene has Loyal's voice saying, What of the heroes of today? That is what we are now. We are the heroes of another age's legend. I think it's time we start acting like it. As he speaks, we see images flash of each of the young characters, so let's talk about them individually. The first is of Rand with his hood up looking determined. This is the same scene from the trailer that makes me believe it is of Rand having a showdown with Lord Turok. The next image is of Egwene, still in her Damani collar and muzzle. She looks angry and fierce. The thing I'm most interested in is the building behind her. It almost looks like a lookout tower. But why is she here? Is there something inside of it that needs to be protected by the Shanchen and their leashed slaves? 
Or is it simply a place of high ground where their channelers can be most effective? Let's put a pin in it and move to the next image, which is of Matt sitting inside a room that looks similar to where he drank the tea in episode 7. He pulls away from something sitting on a table in front of him, and it's the ruby-hilted dagger he stole in season 1. Will Matt turn to the shadow? Will he overcome it? Min's vision saw him stabbing Rand with the same dagger. I'm expecting some type of twist in terms of Matt Cawthon. So far, the show has portrayed him as someone who, instead of dealing with his emotions, walks away from his friends and is unable to communicate to them regarding why he does what he does. He has inner demons that he can't fully escape or overcome. I'm assuming the lack of time we've spent with him this season is to keep us unsure of what he's actually capable of. We then see Perrin inside of what looks to be Falm. He is with Avienda, Bane, Chiad, Loyal, and Masima, one of the Shinaran soldiers. But Masima wears Shan Chan armor. It's possible he joined their army in an attempt to be in a position to help Perrin later on, or did he just steal an outfit for a rescue attempt? The interesting part is that for a moment, Bane raises her black mask over her face, an indication that she is ready to fight and kill. The next image is of Nynaeve, and I have so many mixed emotions. She's wearing the Shan Chen armor and is holding her wrist, like wearing the Soldom cuff is actually hurting her. Because Nynaeve's major archetype is the healer and protector, she's going to have big feelings about wearing jewelry that is made to actually enslave someone. On a lighter note, she looks like a totally different person and it is very cool to see this character in such a contrast. The next image is of Elaine Tracan. She's still wearing her outfit from last episode, so it's unclear at what junction of the episode this scene is from. If Nynaeve is in Shan Chen gear and an attempt to free Egwene, it makes me curious as to what Elaine is doing. She looks so ethereal and sad. Who is she looking at? Someone injured below her? Egwene? It has to be something that is invoking a sad look on her face. Is it perhaps an injured Rand? The next scene is of Lan and Moraine still on the beach, and he's fighting a Shan Chen soldier as a group of other Shan Chen soldiers lay dead around them. This is exciting because for the majority of the season, Lan has been off doing things other than fighting. His character is a warrior. But not just a warrior, one of the strongest and best fighters in the landscape. It's about time we see him in another action sequence. I have to ask, will Lan and Moraine make it to Falm in time to help? The next scene is of dozens of Shan Chen soldiers running across the ramparts of a fortress in Falm. As things move in slow motion, we hear Avienda say, Many people will wake from the dream today. And what she means by that is that many people are going to die. To the Aiel, living and existing is just a dream every single person will someday wake from. Life is harsh and painful. Death brings peace. The scene then changes to Joffrey Bornhold, the father of Dane Bornhold, commanding to the tower. Does he mean the same tower that we see Egwene positioned at? Or does he mean the ramparts where the Shan Chen soldiers are running? Either way, it looks like we can assume the attempt to rescue Egwene, Loyal, and Ingtar will happen during a battle between White Cloaks and the Shan Chen, with our heroes trapped amidst the chaos. Things are getting complicated, and it is so exciting. The next scene is of the Aeol Maidens of the Spear battling the Shan Chen, and after that, we see Lord Ingtar, the Shinaran who was held captive with Loyal. He makes a flying leap while swinging his sword and screaming, For the light and Shinoa. And you guys, I have chills. For any book readers out there, you know what is happening. But this is a battle cry I was really hoping to hear from Ingtar. In this moment, he is yelling a war cry, a declaration for the sight of the light and for Shinoa, his house. I have goosebumps. It's just a cool scene to see, and I'm shocked they included it in the preview. We then see High Lord Turok pull a heron marked sword from its sheath. A heron on a sword means he is a blade master, one of the highest tiers of sword fighters in this world. I'm really excited to see how his fight goes and the choreography of it, especially considering his long fingernails. 
The next image is of Ishamayel walking amidst broken boulders from the tower surrounding him. There is also a dead or injured Soldam on the ground next to him. Is this the same tower that Egwene is seen at earlier in the preview? To the side, we see Rand holding his sword. Ishamayel says, if you keep fighting him, you'll turn them all to the dark. I have to assume he means if Rand keeps fighting the dark one, he will turn all his friends to the dark, but I'm not exactly sure why that would be the case. Is it just a manipulation by Ishamayel or something else? Interpretation on this may vary, so what do you think? The last image is of Matt holding a seemingly wounded Rand, while Rand says, who are you? There are only a couple of main characters Rand hasn't met yet, Elaine, Min, or Avienda. Could it be one of these three? Is it possible this image of Elaine is the moment she meets Rand for the first time? Is this going to be a moment of healing? All I can say is that this preview has been the best one so far and the season finale looks wild. There are so many things that have left me questioning how the show will change things from the books and if I should be expecting some major twists. The biggest questions of the preview are, what is the true nature of Ashamayel and Lanvir's relationship? Are they working together? Also, will Ashamayel release another Forsaken before the end of the season? How will Matt's story conclude? Will he in fact stab Rand with the dagger, just like in Min's vision? Or is it a trick of interpretation? Could Matt be stopping Rand in a moment that will get himself killed? I want to know your theories. Before I wrap things up, I do want to touch on one thing. The finale of season 1 ended on the cliffhanger of the Shanchen fleet rolling up to the coast, introducing them as the new antagonist force for the show, setting them up to be the big baddies for this season. It makes me curious to see if season 2 will end up in a similar fashion. Will we get another cliffhanger, another introduction of a new culture or plotline? Is it possible we see a new Forsaken, or could we maybe get some more insight into the Aiel, a scene of the chiefs in disagreement? Could we see more of Pot on Fane and his plan that leads us to one of the major storylines in Book 4, something that brings us back to the Two Rivers? Or will the end of the season bring us back to the White Tower, introducing more fallout there in the aftermath of a possible proclamation of the Dragon Reborn? Regardless of the last scenes of the episode, all I can say is that I'm so excited to watch the finale, and I've been so impressed with Season 2. Let me know in the comment section if you have any thoughts and ideas. If you enjoy these episodes, let me know by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. The outpouring by new fans and longtime readers has been so much fun this season, and I really look forward to seeing your thoughts. That wraps things up for today, and I'll see you back with the highlights of the finale. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.